Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'll be showing you how to repair and convert your old AC system in your car or truck. Now this truck here is a 1990 Ford Bronco, but this technique will work on many other vehicles out there. Now I will be replacing the AC compressor, lines, and the accumulator, as well as the orifice valve. Now you will need some AC refrigerant oil and a couple of cans of refrigerant, which I'll be using the R134. Now it's very important that you will also need a set of AC manifold gauges and a vacuum pump to correctly evacuate the system and refill it with the fresh refrigerant. Now let's get started. Now first things first, let's disconnect the battery. Next, remove the intake ducting so you can have access to all of the AC components. So now we can start removing some of these AC components but be sure to evacuate any old refrigerant that you may have in your system. It's very important to have a shop do it for you and they'll just charge you a small fee. In my case, all of my old refrigerant has leaked out over the years and my system is bone dry. So now we can start removing this old liquid line. Now this side of the liquid line will require a quick connect remover tool. So just snap it into place push up and then now you can pull out the line. Unplug and remove the low pressure switch. Remove the accumulator line fittings. Now remove the accumulator brackets mounting screws. And now you can remove the accumulator. Now with the accumulator out, you'll have a better view of the location of the orifice tube. As you can tell, the orifice tube is located inside of the lower EVAP line. And to remove it, you can just use a pick to fish it out. Now disconnect the pressure line from behind the AC compressor. And then disconnect the line from the condenser. And now you can completely remove your old AC line. Now we can finally remove the compressor, but first you'll have to remove the belt. Next, unplug the compressor. And now you can unbolt and remove the compressor. So now we have the old AC components removed, it's time to install the new components. And I'll be starting with the new compressor. Now it's important to note that the compressors do require oil to be pre-filled into them before you install. But most new compressors will already have the oil pre-installed into them. And in this case, this compressor has about 7 ounces of oil pre-installed into it already. So I don't have to add any more. But if you need to add any oil to your compressor, either use PAG 46 or PAG 100. Now this complete system takes about 10 ounces of oil, but it will be spread out between the accumulator, condenser, and the evaporative coils. So now I'm ready to install this compressor. Now be sure to leave all of the caps on until you're ready to connect the components together. This is to ensure no dirt or debris will fall inside of the AC lines or compressor. Now install all of the bolts loosely first, and then you can tighten them down. Now once you have the compressor mounted, go ahead and remove this plug so you can connect the pressure line. Remove the cap on the pressure line, and now connect it to the compressor. And tighten it down. Now it is important to note before you install any of the new AC lines, to remove all of the old black o-rings and replace them with the green o-rings. The green o-rings are compatible with the R134 and the black rings are not. And make sure you oil up the new o-ring with the PAG oil. Just oil it up a little bit and slide it on. Remove the protective cap on the AC line and connect it. 
and tighten it down. Now it's time to install the orifice tube. It does have an arrow indicating the direction of the flow. So this orifice tube will point down and install in this fashion here. So before you install the orifice tube, make sure you oil up these O-rings with the PAG oil as well. Just give them a light coating of PAG oil and then you can install the tube. Make sure to install the new green O-rings for the accumulator. Now as I mentioned earlier, this complete system takes about 10 ounces of oil. And since we have 7 in the new AC compressor, I'm going to add about 1 or 2 inside of the accumulator, as the rest will likely be inside of the EVAP and the condenser. Now connect the lines to the accumulator. and tighten it down. And make sure to tighten the accumulator bracket. Now install and connect the low pressure switch. Plug in your AC compressor. And now you can install your belt. Install the fluid line and be sure to coat the O-rings with oil. Install the fluid line into the condenser and tighten it down. And now you can install and tighten down your ducting. And now you can finally reconnect the battery. Alright guys, so we have all those AC components installed. The next step is to connect these AC manifold gauges and the vacuum pump so we can remove any air that's trapped in the system and to check for leaks. So let's get started on that now. Now the blue line will attach to the low pressure side of the system which is located next to the accumulator here. And to be able to use the quick connect fitting you will need to use a quick connect adapter and attach it to the accumulator. And now attach your low pressure fitting. And be sure to keep all the valves in the closed position. Now the red line connects to the high pressure side that's located near the condenser. So again, attach your fitting and connect the high pressure red line. And again, be sure it's in the closed position. And lastly, the yellow line connects directly to the vacuum pump. After the vacuum pump is connected, open up all your valves. Alright guys, so we have everything connected. The next step would be to run the vacuum pump for about 5 minutes, pull a vacuum, and then we'll shut it down and check for leaks. Now after about 5 minutes, go ahead and shut down your vacuum pump and close both of these valves. Check to see if you have any vacuum pulled. I have about 20 inches of vacuum, which is pretty good. The next step is to wait about an hour and check to see if your vacuum still holds. If it does, that means we have no leaks in the system and we're good to proceed to the next step. All right guys, so it's been about an hour and I'm still holding 20 inches of vacuum, so I'm ready to proceed to the next step. Now once again, open up the valves on the manifold and turn on your vacuum pump for another 45 to 60 minutes. This will ensure that there's no moisture trapped in the system. So after you've pulled your vacuum for about an hour, go ahead and close these valves and disconnect your vacuum pump. Now for this next step, you'll take your can of refrigerant and connect this adapter to it. Make sure it's nice and tight. Now connect your yellow line that was connected to the vacuum pump to the fitting. Now screw the fitting down all the way and puncture the can. Once the can is punctured, you'll want to back out the fitting just a little bit to allow refrigerant to flow. Do not back it out too much as you may have a self-sealing can and if you back it out too much, the can will self-seal. Now once your refrigerant can is connected, purge the line of any air. Now the original capacity of the R12 refrigerant to this truck was about 44 ounces. And as a general rule of thumb, you'll want to fill up between 75 to 85 percent of that original capacity when converting to R134. So that approximates to about 36 ounces 
or three cans. And that's what I'll be filling up with today. Now as a reference, I'm checking the ambient temperature inside the truck and it's about 93 degrees. Now the next step is to start the truck and blast the AC. Now while your truck is idling, open up only the low side of the manifold and you should see refrigerant starting to flow. Once enough refrigerant reaches the system, the AC compressor should kick on. Now the AC compressor will cycle on and off until it has enough refrigerant. So this is completely normal operation for now. Now while the refrigerant is being sucked through the line, be sure to rotate it back and forth and give it a couple of good shakes just to make sure you get all the refrigerant out of the can. You'll be able to monitor the refrigerant going through the system through this viewing glass area here. Once the can is depleted, you'll be able to verify that through this glass window and you'll be ready to move on to the next can. Now once your first can of refrigerant has depleted, be sure to close your low pressure side valve. Next, remove the depleted can of refrigerant. Go ahead and connect your new can. And repeat the process. Puncture the can and back it out. All right guys, I'm sitting in the cab and it's feeling pretty frigid in here. I'm pulling about 37 degrees out of the vent, which is pretty good considering it's 95 degrees outside. I have about 36 ounces of refrigerant in the line and that seems to be plenty. So let's go ahead and disconnect that AC manifold. All right guys, once you're satisfied with the results, go ahead and turn off your AC first, then shut down your engine. Now let's go ahead and disconnect these lines. Now be sure to close all the valves first. Again, close down the valve. All right guys, we were able to install those AC components and recharge the system. Now in my case, I had to convert from the R12 to the 134, and I'm pretty satisfied with the results. So if this video helped you guys, give me a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Later.